Hola, welcome to Clear Vision. My name is Simon and all the videos here are based on my experiences as a psychotherapist. After a short hiatus, I am back with a new collection of videos. I've been away with a, I have a revamped website which is being uh, launched next week, along with, you may have noticed some of the Polaris project videos going up, so I've been busy working on that, but more on that another time. As always, please like and subscribe and leave any feedback in the comments section below, or if there's anything you want to know a little bit more about, again, ask me a question, put it in the comments section. You can also contact me, I'm gonna point up to the channel because I'm gonna have to work out how to put the little squares on the video, but if you go to the channel homepage, you can find my contact details. And if you do decide that you want some therapy uh, sessions with me, um, I am also available online if I'm not in, if you don't live in Spain. You can contact me from anywhere in the world. All the details on the website. Without further ado, stop going on about yourself, Simon. Right. <laughs> This week I wanted to talk about something which has come around a few times, uh, especially recently, and I don't know why recently, but there you go, it's a trend. And we're gonna talk about trends, or I'm gonna talk about trends. I get asked this question actually a lot. How do I move forward from this, whatever this may be? Generally, this is normally a loss. So how do I move forward in life? How do I move forward from my loss, from my trauma? And the answer's really, really quite simple, but doing it is not simple. Doing it is quite hard work. So I'm gonna start off with, but or by saying that we all have a past and most of the time we, we kind of delve into the past to see why we are the way we are, why certain things, uh, what, what things, what events in our life have affected us and what kind of uh, messages we've had from the external world, say parental figures, uh, school, peers, uh, career-wise, have then played an influence in how we behave, uh, partners as well, romantic partners. And therefore that all dictates how we respond to the world, how we interact with the world, uh, along with the things that we've learned uh, along the way. What we tend to do is we tend to build uh, what are called defense mechanisms or coping strategies, you may have heard of these, in order to be able to deal with something going on for us at the time. And usually these, these coping strategies are exactly as they say, they help us cope. Uh, defense mechanisms help defend us against the world, help the world penetrating too much. Um, so it's, they're all basically there to help see us through a certain um, set of events or an event or a situation. So, we've had a loss, we've had a traumatic event, we're trying to cope with it, our, our minds have figured out ways of dealing with it. There will be certain amounts of denial as to things that happen, there will be certain maybe memory blocks um, that occur, you will maybe numb off your feelings, maybe we smoke, maybe we drink, maybe we do lots of exercise, maybe we throw ourselves into work, maybe we stare at the four walls, maybe we take um, antidepressant tablets or mushrooms or whatever we do to try and cope, manage with what's going on. What can happen and does tend to happen is eventually these coping mechanisms, these strategies, stop working, they begin to work against us. So our life begins to go a, a little bit backwards, you know, they don't work to our advantage, they no longer help us, the, they, they, they maybe exasperate situations, exaggerate situations, and so therefore it becomes difficult to employ these mechanisms anymore. And that's normally where I find people in the therapy room asking that question, how do I move forward? Is it worth keep investigating the past? How do I actually move forward from an event, uh, from things that have happened in my life. Or if I've compounded a situation, this is the other thing, people tend to compound situations and repeat patterns and, and then things become very, very ingrained um, in what we're doing. But the general question is, still remains is, how do I move forward? I've tried moving forward, I've tried to forget this, I've tried to um, do this, I've looked at various self-help things and all of that is, is kind of good, but what, what we have to remember is, especially on social media, and especially with self-help stuff, there's a lot of trends that tend to happen. So here's an example of a trend which went on, which has gone on for a long time, which was this kind of, uh, you need to learn from life's lessons. You have to learn from life's lessons. Everything there is, is to, there to teach you. There's something you can get out of. There's some kind of value you can get out of a situation, which uh, I'm not gonna disagree with actually. 
On the flip side of that, there's a new trend starting up on the internet, on social media, especially because that's where we, a lot of us get our information from, where it's now saying, well, no, actually, that's not true. You don't have to. You don't have to. Not everything has to be a lesson. You don't have to learn from everything. There's just more pressure to put on yourself. My point here is there's this, the scales end up having to balance out. There's an equilibrium that needs to happen. Um, and the same is true with your life and with moving forward. At some point, you can get stuck in that rut. You can get stuck in the past. You can get stuck holding on to your trauma. You can get stuck investigating. And at some point, you need to move forward. But, and I am now going to sound like one of those um, recent videos, you can do all the therapy you want to do. You can do all the yoga you want to do. You can do all the breathing exercises you want to do. You can do all of this stuff in order to try and move forward, but you will not move forward unless uh, you do something, which I call, uh, maybe I'm not the first person to call it this, but I, I call it a conscious effort. You have to make the conscious effort, the conscious move forward. Um, to describe this a little bit further, what does this look like? Well. You can take, uh, let's say, someone who is um, has a, um, a an, is addicted is has a, is an alcoholic. You can take an alcoholic, or you can take a drug addict. Or you can take someone who smokes cigarettes. At some point, during all of this kind of therapeutic intervention that they have, they can go on all the programs that they want. But at some point, there has to be this conscious. I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to have another drink. I'm not going to take any more drugs. I'm not going to put that needle in my arm. I'm not going to put that powder in my nose. I'm not going to smoke that cigarette. And the same goes with, goes for your life. I um, And so if you change that, and so if you change that to, I'm not going to do this, well, the success, the success of, um, moving forward comes from changing the the language of that so I'm not going to do this I'm going to do that I am actually going to move forward I'm going to lead an alcohol free life but not only am I going to lead an alcohol free life I'm going to go and do this this and this with my life X Y and Z and the same after drugs and the same after a traumatic event and the same after a loss the same after a relationship breakup the same after a loved one dies, the same after a, a family crisis, the same after your health crisis or an accident or whatever it may be that you're trying to move forward. Anybody who recovers from these kind of events and moves forward does not end up dwelling and going around in circles on the event itself or on the past. Now, chances are they did for quite a long time and, and we have to, we tend to kind of ruminate, I think is the word. We tend to kind of ruminate, we go round and round it, we chew it over, we indulge in it, we blah, 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 whatever we need to do. And then there's this point where we go, I had enough now. Now I wanna know, now I need to move. I need to do something different, but I don't know how to do that. And there are many ways to do it, but one of them, one of the, the common uh, the, the, the one, one kind of like universal thing that everybody has to do is this conscious effort, this conscious turn it over, open the door. You still have to respect and honor what happened to you and learn from it if, uh, if there are lessons to be learned in there about yourself, which no doubt there will be because ultimately you have a choice. And yes, I know that's an arguable philosophy, but you know, we do have a choice in how we react in certain situations, even if we're not aware of that choice, but that is a whole other topic. Once we become aware of that choice, now we have a responsibility to ourselves in the future. And that responsibility starts by saying, or starts with saying, this is not what I want for me. That's what I want for me. This is what I want to become. This is what I'm gonna to work towards. This is how I want my life to look. So we're going right back to what, where I often go with a lot of this stuff, which is, Building a shape of yourself, designing a shape of who you are, what you want in life, what do you want your life to look like in one year's time, two years time, five years time, three years time, 10 years time. 
Um, what would you do with your time if money was no problem, but time was limited? Now, what would you do? I see those videos and I kind of like, wrong my eyes. Yeah, yeah. But there's the, the, the idea behind that question is to make you think, is to make you see what's valuable. It's the same behind gratitude. It's the same uh, kind of mechanisms running behind all of these things to help a person realize they have a life and appreciate that life and actually construct it. Make that life of their imagination. Make that life come true. It might not happen the way you want it, but it's definitely not gonna happen if you don't make that move, if you don't make that conscious effort. So there is this point and the answer is always the same. How do I, when I'm asked, how do I move forward from my trauma? How do I stop being depressed? How do I uh, stop um, feeling hurt? How do I move forward? And the answers, the answer kind of overlaps all of them. How do you stop feeling depressed? Well, you can't. You can't just stop. How do you stop feeling sad? Well, you can't. How do you stop feeling hurt? Well, you can't. But you can't stop immediately. But what you, if, what you can do is begin to make moves to it for your future self. It's that loving yourself laying the foundations for your future so your future improves and part of that is i'm going to list it out the first step is this conscious effort this conscious move uh, this conscious uh, decision that you are going to move forward that you are going to now create something and work towards a future version of yourself and lay the foundations for that that is one of the ways in which you can begin, or definitely that is the main uh, kind of switch that you have to turn in your head in order to help yourself begin to move forward from your past trauma, tragedy, loss, uh, sadness, whatever it may be, and begin to build an image or a picture, begin to build though that, 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 that framework of uh, how you want your life to be, who you want to be. Decide who you are, decide what you like, what you don't like, what you want for yourself, what you don't want for yourself. Many of us that, um, haven't done this before. It's all been given to us. It's all been given to us and we internalize it as our own. And then there comes a point often in life where you go, oh, hang on, I'm not happy with that. This has brought me nothing but misery. Well, it's brought me some happiness, but mainly misery. So how do I, how do I break out from this? How do I move forward in my life? How do I become me? Well, that stop there and sit and decide and then make that conscious effort, make that conscious move and also honor your past and respect it. Don't, don't hate it. Um, don't, um, because it helped shape you and it's given you a lot of tools. It's that when you flip it on your head, you know, if you, um, uh, uh, heart, difficult times are gonna make you strong and resilient um, loss is going to make you appreciate connection and all of these things so you can kind of flip things around on the head but there is this thing which I call this conscious effort this conscious move which at some point you have to make and you have to it's like opening the door and going right I'm going that way and going that way I hope that helps I'm gonna do another video on that topic and see where we get to and uh, maybe elaborate on a few bits some more in the meantime, please take care of yourselves. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you uh, enjoyed what you saw today and I'll see you soon, adios.